Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over a PC build for $1,000. So a lot's changed in the last couple of months since I did my last PC build video. So the Intel Ivy Bridge processors are now out, so not only are they a little bit faster, but they also take up less power, so hey, win-win there. And on top of that, AMD and Nvidia have both released all kinds of new graphics cards. So let's go ahead and take the best of the best and create a $1,000 gaming machine. To kick our build off, we're going to be using the Intel Core i5-3570K CPU. Now for the past year and a half or so, the i5-2500K has been one of my favorite CPUs for gaming computers, and this is the successor. Overall, this is going to be very similar to the previous generation i5. So it's still going to have 4 cores without hyperthreading support, and it's also still going to be clocked at 3.4 GHz. However, the major difference is, since this is one of the new Ivy Bridge processors, it is now based on the new Intel 22 nanometer process. Now this means a couple of things. For starters, it's going to be a little bit faster for the most part, so don't expect any kind of major, major differences. However, it's still going to be very, very fast, it's still going to work really, really well for pretty much anything you throw at it. On top of that, it's also going to take up a little bit less power. So instead of being a 95 watt part, it's now going to be a 77 watt part. So you know, it's going to be a little bit easier on your power supply, your motherboard, all that kind of good stuff. Since this is a K-series CPU, you should be able to overclock it well in excess of 4 GHz, which makes it an awesome start for our build for $250. We're also going to be using a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus CPU cooler. Now by default, you're going to get a CPU cooler a lot like this. And while this is alright for base clock speeds and some kind of moderate overclocking, if you want to do some major stuff and you want to get the best performance out of your CPU, a Hyper 212 Plus will be fantastic. It comes with one fan, and if you'd like, you can add a secondary fan for push-pull airflow. For about $25, this is going to be a great addition to our build. For a motherboard, we're going to be going with a Gigabyte GA-Z77D3H. Now I use a Gigabyte board in my build, and this one's got all the features that you need. This is one of the new Z77 boards, which means it features full support for all the cool new features in Ivy Bridge. So that means that it will fully support processor overclocking, it also now supports PCI Express 3.0, it also has USB 3.0 built into the chipset. It fully supports the Intel HD 4000 graphics built into your CPU, so if you ever need it, it's there. And it also has a dual UEFI BIOS, so if you have any problems with overclocking or updating your BIOS, you can always revert to the backup and you're going to be good to go. And of course, it does have USB 3 port as well as SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, which gives it pretty much all the major features you need for about $120. For a graphics card, we're going to be using the ASUS Radeon 7850. This is going to give us plenty of power to run pretty much any of today's games totally maxed out. With 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, this is going to have plenty of memory to handle pretty much anything you throw at it. On top of that, it's also based on the new 28 nanometer process. So just like with Ivy Bridge, what this means is more performance with less power draw. It also fully supports PCI Express 3.0. It also has ASUS's Direct CU cooling technology. Basically what that means is that it's going to have dual fans, so it's going to be really good if you want to overclock it, which you definitely can do, and it's going to give you some really awesome performance for about $250. For memory, we're going to be using 8GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM. This is the same stuff that I use in my computer, although this is with the lower profile heat sinks. Now basically the major difference is, is that with the low profile heat sinks, you're going to have more room to mount a secondary fan on your Hyper 212 Plus CPU cooler. Now again, not a huge deal if you want to get the different version with the bigger heat sinks, by all means go ahead, but overall this is some really solid stuff for about $55. For storage, we're going to be using a pair of drives, starting with an SSD. Now, I know sometimes I get some flack from you guys about including an SSD in my gaming build. If you want to continue using a Caviar Black, by all means go ahead. However, in my opinion, an SSD is totally 110% worth it. Not only does it make your system way faster, I mean, come on, it's a gaming PC, you don't want to have a slow, pokey old hard drive in there. But on top of that, they're actually not all that expensive, especially considering that SSD prices are going down and hard drive prices are still... Hi, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use an SSD on this one. An OZZ Agility 3 60GB SSD ought to do the trick. Now I'll be the first to admit, 60GB is not a lot of storage. However, all you need to do is just install your operating system, your major programs and games, you know, just this kind of stuff that you need super fast access to. Everything else can go on your secondary hard drive. Now beyond that, this may not be the fastest or the best SSD in the world. For about $60, it's absolutely going to smoke any kind of physical hard drive out there. For our main storage drive, we're going to be using a Seagate Barracuda 2TB 7200 RPM drive. Now this is going to give you plenty of speed to put in all your kinds of music, pictures, media. You can also install an extra couple of games on there if you want. And on top of that, since you've got 2 terabytes, it's going to have plenty of space for pretty much all your stuff. For about $110, it's going to be a great addition to our build. For a power supply, we're going to be going with an OCZ Mod Extreme Pro 600 watt modular supply. With 600 watts of capacity, it's going to have plenty of power to run our build, as well as if you do any upgrades as far as hard drives, fans, that kind of stuff. On top of that, since it's a modular supply, that means that you don't have a massive pile of cables in your case. Simply plug in what you need, route it all, and you're going to be good to go for about $50. For a case, we're going to be using the Antec 302. Now, I like this for quite a few reasons. 
For starters, it's a nice big case, so you got plenty of room for all your kind of awesome high-end hardware that you're about to pack in there. On top of that, you also have really nice airflow. So since we're going to be overclocking, you all of course have a lot of nice cool airflow to make sure everything doesn't explode, because exploding is bad. So you're going to have nice airflow, and you also have quite a few extra fan mounts if you want to kind of improve the airflow and change it up. All for about $70, this is an absolutely awesome case to start with. For an optical drive, we're going to be going with an ASUS DVD burner. Now this is kind of optional. I know a lot of people don't even use optical drives anymore. However, I've definitely found that it can be helpful. So of course, if you want to install Windows, or you want to install any kind of programs that's on a disk, it definitely can come in handy. Of course, if you want to skip this, you definitely can. Or if you want to upgrade it to a Blu-ray, you definitely feel free. Uh, but otherwise, it's going to run you about $22. Another option is going to be Windows 7. Now, I used to include this in all my builds. However, I got a lot of feedback from you guys saying, hey, I don't need Windows 7. I've got an older version of Windows, or I'm going to be using Linux, or I've got Windows 8. So if you want to go ahead and skip this, feel free but otherwise it is going to be $100. So what's the damage? Overall, the build is going to cost you $1,013.91. And yeah, yeah, I know I lied. I said it's a $1,000 build, but if you got to go flip your couch over and find that extra $14, go for it. Now, definitely keep in mind that prices are constantly fluctuating, so I have links to everything in the description of this video. So keep in mind that by the time you watch this, it could be much higher, much lower, or whatever. But again, all the links will be in the description. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It helps me out. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.